Welcome to Ignite to Impact, a weekly podcast that explores what it takes to make your community, our nation, and the world a better place. You've tuned in to be inspired and enlightened as we pull back the curtain and dive into intimate and energetic conversations with achievers and doers. We are talking with leaders who are in the trenches making phenomenal changes through business, nonprofits, education, and the arts. Our goal? To encourage, motivate, and challenge you to go to the next level in leadership. Now, here's your host, Master Leadership Strategist, Dr. Geneva Williams. So, let's ignite to impact. Welcome back. Uh, This is Dr. Geneva Ignite to Impact. And my guest today, having a very thoughtful, um, inspiring conversation with Dr. Ken Harris. And as you know, he's the uh, new head of the National Business League. And we're going to have him tell us just a touch more about that organization, but I want you to know he's uh, seen as an influential, innovative, visionary leader, and D-Business Magazine had him as uh, one of their most influential leaders, and Crane's Detroit Business had him as one of their 40 under 40 a couple of years back, and he's gotten so many accolades, and we're just delighted to be having this conversation with him. So, uh, Ken, I want to, I just would like you to let our listeners know, because I think it was a, a, you know, just a a very revolutionary thing that occurred with the um, uh, forming of the uh, re-engineered National Business League. Tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. Long in a long story short, in, on Juneteenth uh, of last year, 2017, we made the huge announcement that we acquired and merged the oldest and largest black trade association that ever existed. It actually, existed 12 years before the U.S. Chamber of mm-hmm. Commerce and okay. Dr. Booker T. Washington, okay. Dr. Geneva mm-hmm. um, was very instrumental in f- helping to Great. form the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Right. Yes, uh, and so with that, uh, we consumed 365 leagues across the country, mm-hmm. um, with four new regional offices in wow. Los Angeles, Washington D.C., Atlanta, Georgia, and Detroit, Michigan. Wow. And what's special uh-huh. is that we were able to move the headquarters from Washington D.C. to Detroit. Okay. And which now Mark Douglas, the president of Avis Ford, is the chair chairman of, and I am the newly elected uh, president and Fantastic. CEO of this national construct that we will yes. relaunch, re-engage, and retool uh, to position our full economic and commerce-driven agenda for black people. Okay, so if I'm an entrepreneur, yes, okay, and I'm in Atlanta. Yes, I'm living in Atlanta, and I he- and I know I find out that one of the offices is yes. in Atlanta of the National Business League. Yep. What are you going to do for me? So many different things. Uh, the great Tell thing us. is uh, we had a great model here in Michigan that we get to duplicate across the country. Uh, so one thing that we know uh, that separates people from success is access. Uh, and our goal is to get you from A to Z with the least amount of gray hair and okay. stress. Okay. So when it comes to marketing, advertising, legal support, resources that you need, access to capital, whatever it is that you need to be successful as a business owner, this organization will not only connect you, uh, but put you in position to help you grow mm. and build capacity, scope mm. and scale mm. and success. And that's what it's all about. Okay. We know that there's 2.9 million African American businesses across the country. Uh, we know that um, in the urban economy, the fastest growing segment of entrepreneurs in the entire country are African American women, black women entrepreneurs. So we're going to extremely focus on that. Uh, but what we also notice is that 90% of the 2.9 million black businesses are between one and five employees, which is consistent mm-hmm. with other ethnic groups in mainstream businesses as well is how do you get 
small businesses and entrepreneurs to hire and grow. Mm -hmm. And that's our main goal here with the National Business League now, Mm -hmm. given the gift of our great ancestor, Dr. Booker T. Washington, Mm -hmm. to build on that 118-year-old legacy, but at the same time to provide not only uh, business solutions for business problems, but we're going to provide business solutions for business opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I am not only going to uh, make sure that we usher this organization and bring on some of the most talented black folk in the entire country centered around economics and entrepreneurship. But at the same time, we're going to forge an agenda to create an additional 2.9 million businesses Mm -hmm. because we want people who are stuck in that job, who hate being at that job, that's not living their passion, have ideas of owning their own business, uh, who uh, need just a little bit of help and a little bit of assistance. Uh, And you can still have a career and be entrepreneurship minded. We're going to get you out of that career so that you can live your purpose and form a business around it. And why not make money at the same time? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So it just seems like NBL, the National Business League, you know, that's that's the place to be. (laughs) I mean, that's the place to hook up with. It's the future. Yes. And 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 the future is economics. Okay, so 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 why is the future economics? Because you're looking at a world right now, uh, and, and our name of our new campaign is MBL 2020. Okay. Uh, why? Because that's going to be a significant year for a whole lot of folk. 2020. 2020. Mm-hmm. You're going to see a lot of organizations that existed disappear. Okay. You're going to see a lot of changes, a lot of consolidations, uh, a lot of uh, uh, normal uh, situations where you saw the big tech bub bust Mm -hmm. at at one point you saw the housing bubble bust at one point Mm -hmm. and i believe in 2020 you're going to see a lot of different constructs change Mm -hmm. and so we're positioning ourselves in that campaign over the next year we're going to launch our regional offices in la dc atlanta and detroit Mm -hmm. uh the next year after that in 2019 we're going uh to every urban economy in this country and globally um, um to put our leagues back in place uh so that there's an institution in place. Uh, and in 2020, we're bringing back the National Business League 120-year-old uh, convention mm-hmm. uh, in which mm-hmm. we're going to mobilize and convene people around economic empowerment. Mm-hmm. And that's what this is all about, Dr. Geneva, mm-hmm. is a place and home for people to grow their business and more okay. importantly uh, to learn how to empower themselves and their families and build generational mm-hmm. wealth and hopefully pass something down mm-hmm. uh, uh, to the folk that you provide seeds for mm-hmm. and that's not just your own personal seeds but mm-hmm. the communicable seeds mm-hmm. that exist we have been through segregation i i permanently uh, i'm permanently believe that segregation was uh, a a great time for us Mm -hmm. in a way because when integration happened uh, we lost our businesses we lost our communicable way of dealing with each other we don't even know our neighbors anymore Uh, we don't know how to consume and patronize uh, businesses that might exist in our communities Um, we skip over them and as a 1.5 trillion dollar economy we could rebuild our neighborhoods and our blocks one step at a time. Mm -hmm. We don't need anyone else to be successful. And I think as a people, we've been too dependent for far too long. And that's why entrepreneurship and economic development is the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, so Ken, you know, and that was a a lot of powerful stuff right there. You know, so some some of it I want to unpackage in in this way because I, I heard you talking about you know what the future looks like. Well, future. You know, twenty twenty. That's just two years away. Right around the you corner. You know, right around the corner. It's here. It's here. It really is. It really is. The future is here now. And so, I want to really kind of understand what you see in terms of leadership yep. uh, in the future, which, as we said, is right here, right now. Yep. And, and and I'm particularly interested in your perspective because the what we call the Gen X uh, generation Mm -hmm. uh, that Generation X those who are born between the ages of 30 to 50 given give or take a few years either way okay that group of folk are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs 
Okay, people tend to think, oh, it's the millennials, but it's not. They haven't caught up yet. Um, and that generation there, um, they're, they're starting businesses. They're trying to get into it. And probably even many more want to start businesses. So I want to have some conversation, your perspective. I want to hear from you about, you know, leadership and what it takes and all of that. So let's start out with um, what does it take for what should, uh, you know, so I'm I want to get out there and I want to uh, start a business. Uh, What are some of the things I should look for? Dr. Geneva, you got to know who you are. Okay. And before you can help or serve anyone else, you have to find your place, Mm -hmm. your purpose. Okay. And that that means in business, too. In business, too. The Calvary's not coming. Okay. All right. If you don't own your own, look to be owned by somebody else. Okay. I've always believed that uh, self-empowerment is absolutely critical to community empowerment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, So many times we live for so many different things. Mm Mm-hmm. And we don't live for ourselves and our own true purpose. And finding our purpose, sometimes we go an entire lifetime not knowing what we were gifted to do in our place in society. And so where I find myself now is, is, is actually not just talking about business, but talking about self. What is your spiritual self? What is your spiritual grounding for whatever that may be? Um, what is your health like? There's no mm-hmm. wealth without health Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we got to get back to taking care of ourselves what is your family structure like your support structure if you don't have it how do you reach out to role models and find them and engage them if you don't have a family structure how do you create it family doesn't necessarily mean mama and daddy it can mean a whole lot of things in the community what are you doing about your physical appetite Are you going to the gym? Mm -hmm. Are you strong mentally, physically, spiritually? Are you aware? And there's a difference between not only feeding yourself with knowledge, which is absolutely critical, because a community without knowledge or wisdom is a community that will fail, that will perish. Those are true words of wisdom. So if you're not constantly training yourself up in the game, becoming the best in your chosen endeavor, reading things that will help prepare your life for the future, enhancing yourself so that you can empower not only yourself and if you're in business your business Mm -hmm. but more importantly your family your community and those that are around you then we're headed in the wrong direction and so this is a bigger picture dr geneva williams and the fact that at the end of the day we got to get back to self growth holistic growth spiritual growth mental physical educational growth and we have to tap into that synergy that was already there but we've been blinded and programmed by the system to not realize our full potential it's interesting i mean i just i just really um love this perspective i mean because i asked you a question about you know entrepreneurship economic growth and you and, and and I think old school, the immediate first reply would talk about access to capital, financing, and I'm sure those things are still there and in the picture, but you first went to this bigger picture, this 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 whole perspective that uh, your own self growth is important, that the where you are physically and health-wise, where you are in terms of your family, that whole balance uh, piece, the knowledge, how you have to be, I think I'm hearing you say, how important it is to be the best in your craft, to, to just just be so exactly. smart and be at the top of your industry and, and doing that training to become the best that there is. It's, you know, this bigger picture that you immediately went to. Am I, am You're right I on. capturing what You're you capturing. said? I, I just want to make sure because I think that that's really some some new stuff that I think entrepreneurs, those who want to grow, those who want to lead change for the future, that they need to hear. Yeah, and this is a day where the celestial is saying everything that you were taught is being either uh, reorganized, 
knowledge uh-huh. is proving okay. facts that okay. we thought were facts is okay. wrong. Right, right. Um, foods that we ate, we mm-hmm. thought were healthy, but were actually killing us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, spiritual or religious uh, constructs that we believed in, uh, we find mm-hmm. that were created. Okay. Um, uh, situations where we found ourselves trapped. Uh, couldn't go outside of a certain radius or demographic or geographic location. We're finding ourselves unlimited now Mm -hmm. in a perspective of global opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And family is more than just where you were birthed from. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are villages, Mm -hmm. there are communities all over the world Mm -hmm. that are looking to embrace your craft and your purpose. Mm -hmm. And we have Mm -hmm. to get those those ideas out into the mainstream Mm -hmm. of society. We can no longer be trapped. This is about freedom. Mm -hmm. This is about holistic health. Mm -hmm. This is about taking care of yourself. You Mm -hmm. can't take care of anyone else if you don't take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is not being socialized or conditioned uh, to just pull a wedget or a tool. I see. Right. 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 We got to change the way that Mm -hmm. we think. Mm -hmm. It is time to break barriers. No longer are women subjugated to the home. Mm -hmm. No longer uh, is it acceptable to say you have to be married and have kids. Mm -hmm. No longer is it acceptable that a man positioned in society uh, is not to have tears Mm -hmm. or weep or love or hug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are breaking down all the norms Mm -hmm. and things that were put in place to program us and to control us and to minimalize our experience. And that's where we find in ourselves. You see these Mm -hmm. young people. I'm Mm -hmm. so inspired because they are breaking through. That's right. They're they're rejecting everything that was taught by their parents and grandparents Mm -hmm. to a certain certain degree Mm -hmm. because if it ain't right Mm -hmm. if it's not factual Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it doesn't exist to them and you know it's so interesting because i've been doing a lot of uh, uh thinking and and reading and researching about you know the the future which is today but this whole need for a a different new approach to leadership I'm thinking of it as you know this next generation leadership um, and so I've you know been working on this model and and so much of what you're saying resonates with my thinking about how uh, work and what we do uh, you know it's it's all about finding balance you know if we want to lead this change and making a difference and that's it's it's like this leadership for a greater purpose and impact it's more than just the profit it i mean certainly that's important no, no one's going to get to that in fact i think you said something what did you tell me earlier something about talk to me about profit and promise and what that means from your point of view. Today. Well, I believe purpose leads to profit. Ah, now see, that that's what you said. That's I remember it now. Purpose leads, leads to, to profit. profit. So you're going to have to break that down. What's what that I mean, mean is, is when you know who you are, you attract money. Okay. You attract okay. good people. Okay. When right. your spirit is clean. Okay. When you have filtered out of your life all of the bad things that are holding you back, Mm -hmm. all of these emotions that are stopping you from being able to have the type of knowledge and logical thought processes to tap into your intuition and your discernment ability to strategize your life and people that you will empower for generations. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about because it's a staged development. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always tell young people, Mm -hmm. find something that you love Mm -hmm. grab it okay ride it hold on to it Mm -hmm. perfect it Mm -hmm. get to a point where you know so much about it not only will you be successful at it but you will start to innovate and change it ah okay and so in this stage development Mm -hmm. when you reach that pinnacle of knowledge and wisdom and intuition and discernment in your purpose in life, you will attract like people. Mm -hmm. And the Mm -hmm. whole secret Mm -hmm. to life is the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. When you're healthy, when your spirit's right, when your energy level is high, Mm -hmm. when you are are in the position of making things happen, your relationships are good, your family situation is good, you know who you are, you stand on your own feet, that's when the movement 
begins. Right. And is that also what you're saying? Your your belief is that that's also when the profit comes. The, the profit money in you. The the money and the in things you. that you're okay. All We've right. just so, been conditioned and brainwashed okay. and programmed and filtered with all these things that destroy our yes. bodies and our minds and fake friends and fake purposes and all these material and superficial and worldly things that we seek. And it's not us. Okay, Dr. Harris. Okay, Dr. It's Ken. Not us. I, I hear you inspirational. Now but let but let me ask this. And also got it, you know, it's that bigger, that purpose, you know, you you find yourself, you understand it through self growth, you know, it gives you the confidence, it gives you the ability, everything's in balance for the moment, you know, purpose, people, profit. Okay, purpose, people, profit. Okay, three P's, three P's, got it. So let me put another P and ask you to comment on that. Pain. Pain points. What are the pain points? So what I mean by that is my question is, what are the things that your generation in finding the three P's, okay, people, purpose, purpose, and profit, and profit, finding those P's. What's the P of pain? What are the pain points you all go through? What are the challenges to yeah. doing that? There's got to be some challenges. You know, Dr. So, so Geneva, tell me those pain points. Dr. Geneva, life is a challenge. Right. No, I Finding got that. Finding your purpose is a challenge. No, I got that. But what, yep. what are it, some of the pain points? What the are the pain frustrations? Is, I don't see pain in my purpose, okay, to be what, honest with you. But what frustrates you or what, what are things that you see that maybe frustrate you or you might be overwhelmed by or that folk in your generation or people you run up to. I understand you. I don't accept it. Yeah, okay. I don't accept that mindset. Okay, so what do people who come up to you, you have, because one of the things I see all the time, I see um, entrepreneurs and business people come up to you for advice all the time. I've been in the room. What do they say to you? What what are they looking for? What are they ultimately, saying? One of the, some uh, of the frustrations. Entrepreneurs are. are looking for purpose, and mm-hmm. they're looking for design. Okay. And and in that purpose, in that design, that's why I'm able to help people with the framework or just give advice. But ultimately, it's you that's going to have to find you. Okay. What I can do is I can show you how to fish. I don't necessarily know that you're going to be successful at it. Mm-hmm. I want you to fish. I'll give you the rod. I'll okay. give you the string. We'll put the even the meat on and on the hook. And work it together. But you got to go out there and fish. Okay. And for too long, we have been a dependent people. Okay. It's time for us to grow both individually so that we can be independent. Mm-hmm. And when we're independent, we're conscious. Okay. We're mentally strong. Great. We're physically strong. Okay. We're aware. Right. And there's a difference between knowledge and consciousness. Mm-hmm. I want people to move from not just having knowledge, being able to have a degree or a PhD or a mm-hmm. law degree. Mm-hmm. And you've went through the system. So you have knowledge but how do you transfer knowledge to consciousness where you're creating and impacting and innovating the people around you and I think that is the next frontier it gets back to economic development again and my purpose I realize this is the third reconstruction post reconstruction uh, we had what the Freedmen's Bureau 40 acres and a mule right they gave us black codes they gave us Jim Crow They did everything to stop us from being economically successful, independent, having our own money. Mm -hmm. And even when we did it successfully, Black Wall Street, Black Bottom, they destroyed those communities. Then we get to a point of post-civil rights Mm -hmm. where we had affirmative half action or civil no rights. Mm -hmm. Instead of going after the whole pie, we were relegated to just a piece of the pie or what Nixon would say, the fraction of the action. Right. And so now... Now we're at the third reconstruction, which is the financial and economic empowerment of black people. And what does it take for us to own our own so that we can do the things necessary to empower not only our families and our communities, but ourselves. And at the end of the day, when we're strong individually and we come together collectively and 
collective economics, an African proverb. Mm -hmm. We will therefore see the results of our pains disappear. Mm -hmm. So so one of the things that uh, the National Business League does is work with people who need help in. So you finish that sentence for me. Purpose, connecting with people, and we'll lead you to profit. All right. I love it. See, that's that's what I think that that conversation is on such a um, different level than typically the conversations of the old were about starting a business. And the motivation was money. Absolutely. And Absolutely. when we got it's, it's the money. A, it's, it's a really a, a different mindset. And, and so let me ask you, Ken. Um, what do uh, folks say when you approach it that way? Do they immediately say, oh, got it. Yeah, let me find my purpose. Or do they say, well, wait a minute now, I need some money. What, what, what's the reaction of people? The reaction of anything that is positive and of the light and comes from an individual okay. who knows his purpose, who knows how to engage people. Who and understands profit, understands the economy, they're going to embrace it wholeheartedly. Okay. And, and then for those who don't? Those who don't, it's not your time yet. You ah, haven't reached to that okay. stage development okay. in your life. Okay. I don't know what you have going on, okay. what you've been programmed to think as, the limitations that are in your life. Mm -hmm. Your relationship might not be right. Your educational background might not be right. You don't know your business. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to serve people. Your customer service is not where it should be. So does the NBL help those individuals as well? Or do you refer them to other organizations who perhaps are more focused on those kinds of Dr. things? Dr. Geneva, our new membership program is not going to just work on the business when you finish okay. our six month certification right. program okay we are building the holistic okay. self got it we are okay. reinculturating okay. you with your okay. history with your legacy got it we will give you the tools that you need an accountant mm -hmm. a lawyer all right we will See, give I you everything that you need okay. access to capital okay. but more Great. importantly we're going to work on the self too because when that. you become rich yes and you get the money yes i want to know that you're conscious enough to know what to do with it to know what to do with it that's right so when you when you got it what you do with it yeah and so and, and so i wanted to yeah i wanted to hear that dr ken because i want our listeners to understand that there is a place uh for those who are interested in entrepreneurship or in growing where they are as entrepreneurs, Doctor Geneva. Because let me let me just let me just see if I can just be, just wrap okay. it to make sure that I'm understanding. Because I know you tell me, Doctor Ken, if I'm wrong. Okay. Because I think what I'm hearing you say is yes, we have the what should I call it? These are my words. The traditional menu. Of services, so we can help you access the capital. We've got a six-week, you know, business basics program. Uh, we'll make those connections and net help you network. So you got the basics, but what we really got for you is also this broader way of thinking to help you understand that it's about you yourself, your development, and that with purpose comes profit, and that how you have to be able to work with people. I, I just want to say, so you have the National Business League and all that you, Dr. Ken, espouse and what you've put in yourself into the organization gives folk both. You give them the basics, but you want to take people to a better place. Is, and, is that? And Dr. Geneva, more importantly, we want to put the power in people's hands. Okay. The day and okay. age of individuals so controlling that's your destiny, the gatekeepers. That's another P. It's another P. Okay. It's another so, P. So and the Calvary's got, not coming. Yeah, so we've you know, got... We're not so reinventing got, the wheel, Dr. Right. Geneva Williams. We're not reinventing the wheel. The Calvary's not coming. Okay. We're, we're going back to Kemet. 
We're going back to the original thoughts of mathematicians and educators and those who uh, illuminated knowledge and wisdom. Uh That's being shared and reconnected to the ancestry and to the current day leadership. And so now you have a group of leaders that are woke that are conscious, that are coming forward, that are not bought, that are not influenced by money, that are not influenced by social pressures, that are not influenced about fitting in, that are not Mm -hmm. influenced by the corporate or institutional structures that existed. So now it's the time that we have to find ourselves with purpose. And once we deliver that purpose, we will change the world together, Dr. Janine. All right. So here we are. So Dr. Ken, I'm so appreciative and blessed. No, I'm honored. That that you came in to have this uh, conversation. I think it, it's been inspiring. It's been enlightening. I think you're pushing the envelope um, as I you know, have seen you in your career do um, this this magnificent strategic alliance you've created with the National Business League. Um, but but more important, how you've um, uh, in, in, entrenched your thinking, your upbringing, your mission-oriented self into the development of the organization with a with a new approach, really. I think to economic development and. Um, uh, you know, I love the the purpose, people, profit um, scenario, and we've added the P of power. So now we've got purpose and people and profit and power. And we did have some conversation about pain points as well. So now we've five got some. P's. Yeah, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we got five P's. Who knows? Now, see, Dr. Ken, we can create a whole new model. Just we can this, create whole, a whole new, this whole conversation it's here. Created, it's already Dr. there. Geneva. We just got to go get it. That's that's right. So I am so delighted um, that you uh, were able to join uh, me again. It's just been um, a stimulating conversation, as as I mentioned um, to you, and and I'll say again to my listening audience. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking about next generation leadership, and. Um, particularly what we have to do to lead change, to find balance, to really do some innovating under pressure, to make a difference, to to tackle some of these social issues that, that we see out there that we face every day, and to collaborate more, to work to work more with each other to make a difference and and create this kind of change. So, I've I've been doing a lot of thinking about it. I've I'm I'm almost to the finishing points of of a new model, a, a new approach to leadership, and I'm going to be sharing that with you over uh, the next uh, few months as as we talk talk to each other and and have folk come in and and talk about these various approaches that we need for the next generation, for the future, which is today. And I'm so delighted that, frankly, I feel a lead-off guest for that conversation has been Dr. Ken Harris. So, again, join me at iTunes, go there, subscribe, give me a review. Until the next time, we ignite to impact. Thank you. You've been listening to Ignite to Impact. Your host is Dr. Geneva Williams, an award-winning executive, facilitator, and master leadership strategist. Dr. Geneva is dedicated to inspiring others to get their leadership on and equipping the next generation with leadership tools and tips to help make the world a better place. Sign up to download Dr. Geneva's mini ebook on leadership. Get the show notes, links, and other resources at drgenevaspeaks.com. That's drgenevaspeaks.com. Thanks for listening. Please share the podcast to those in your community via Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Google+. And leave us a five-star review in iTunes. When you do that, it helps others find the podcast easier. Send your questions or comments to info at drgenevaspeaks.com.